I was going to need them eventually. So, like, why not buy them now? Because then you save money later. You know what I mean? That's the whole girl math, book math. Hello, book besties. It's Carol. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, today's video, we're just going to make a chill video where I basically am just going to be talking about all the books on my physical TBR. So, if you don't know what a physical TBR is, it's basically all the books that you have not read that you own physical copies for just a video to wake myself up and be like here i'll stop buying books um actually read the ones you already have i don't even know how many books are gonna be in this video i probably should keep count somehow i'm probably gonna be standing up the whole entire time i'll be doing books below me the shelves below me i'll just pick them up y'all are just gonna have to trust me that i never have not read them so if you want to follow my goodreads to make sure that i am not lying It'll be linked down below, along with my other socials, if you want to keep up with me, Amazon wishlist, all that dang stuff is down there. And what also is down there? The subscribe button, the like button, comment, anything you want. Stick around. No particular order, two on each bookshelf are fantasy, bottom four on each bookshelf are all romance. The Sarah J. Mass shelf, um, surprisingly, there's a, lot of, there, there's a lot on there. I have a lot of Miss Sarah to read, but I'm not complaining about it. I have A Court of Silver Flames left to read. I'm excited, but like also scared because these are not my favorite characters. Throne of Glass books. So I have only four left to read. I have Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and King of Ash from the Throne of Glass series that I have to read. Hopefully you finish that this year. Turn to Ring Kira, you don't even like need these because you're not even close to even starting them. But you know what? I was gonna need them eventually. So like why not buy them now? Because then you save money later. You know what I mean? That's the whole girl math, book math. I have both Crescent City books. Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood. Crescent City, House of Sky and Breath. That is already a lot of books. Um, let's move on. Next shelf. Alright, first on top, I have this book called To Kill a Shadow. I just honestly bought this because I thought the purple screen edges were cool. But it's also a fantasy book. I think it's YA. <laughs> I have six books in the Harry Potter series that I have to read. This kind of scares me. Okay, three more books on that shelf. Uh, the next two books in the Serpent and Dove series. Second one, Blood and Honey. Third one, Gods and Monsters. Not really necessary for me to buy the next two books. Could have just bought, bought the next one and actually read it and then bought the third. But, God, that scared me. And then lastly, I have a book called Paper Princess by Aaron Watt. I have no idea what this is even about. But I saw it at like a Barnes and Noble, I think buy one, get one 50% off table. I think it's a fantasy. We're gonna move down. Yes, we'll move down to this shelf. As you saw, there was already a book missing on this shelf um, because I'm currently reading it. So good for me. One less on the physical TBR. The Ashes and the Starker's King. I'm about halfway through the book it's still technically on my physical tbr because i haven't finished it yet iron flame by rebecca yaros second book in the fourth wing series still scared to start it i probably won't read it anytime soon which is so bad but like i'm just terrified oh this is oh this is nice right so i didn't realize that um literally all this shelf i pretty much have not read swan and kingdom by tahara mafi this is a first book in some new fantasy dystopian series i think she's got going on i just i really like her writing style so i was like let me pick up her next series then we have two which i honestly should not have bought the second one if i haven't even read the first one trial of the sun queen i don't know it's some kind of fantasy series i really didn't need to buy the second one i have no really idea what this series is about i have the graceling this is a fantasy series pretty much all i know i think it's about an assassin so that's why I really wanted to pick it up. I have a duology again, but at least it's finished, so there's no more books I have to buy. The One Dark Window series by Rachel Gilling. I also have the first one, One Dark Window. Hope to maybe get to this this month. And then the sequel, Two Twisted Grounds. And I have Source Two of Thorns, which is like a really, really old release. I heard it's a fantasy standalone, so at least I'm only buying this one and not a whole series. Last but not least for just that shelf. The Crown of Oaths and Curses by Jabri, which one of my favorite booktubers, Rachel, Raven-haired reader, read this book and said it's like true enemies to lovers. I read the two prequel novellas for the series and it does really sound interesting and I am excited to get into this. Faded Mates. 
Yes, if you know me because of the Akatar series, I love Faded Mates. So on to this shelf, but I have one more book that was technically on this shelf that I didn't talk about, but the first one's over here. We'll talk about them together. I have both books in the Divine Rival series. I truly told myself I was not gonna buy the second book because I didn't need to because I haven't even read the first one. But they were having a sale and it's like a hardback and it was a good sale too. So I was like, well dang, now I need to pick it up while it's on sale. And that's what happened. Divine Rivals being the first one, it's some kind of like magical, historical, fantasy book. With this vows, I can see like my problem with fantasy is I just buy them and I just don't read them quick enough. The High Mountain Court. As you can see, this was a buy one, get one 50 at Barnes. It, was, it has been on my wish list for a while, so I decided to pick it up. I don't even remember what it's about. I have a Curse So Dark and Lonely. I know this is a fantasy trilogy. These two are part of two kind of different series, I guess, but they're still, they're both by the same author. Two books in Cassandra Clare's Shadow Hunters universe. I don't even know really what it's called. Lydia Bones. This is like the first first book you read. It's some kind of modern day fantasy taking place in New York. It's a huge universe. And then I have the first book in the Infernal Devices series. So this is like interconnected or comes after. I'm not really sure how it works, but I had it. I found it at a thrift store for literally like two dollars. So I was like, might as well. All right, besties, if we're being honest, a lot I have not read in this stack and I don't want to bring it down. I'm going to show you, tell you the title. Powerless, Lauren Roberts, YA Fantasy. I want to read this soon. Everybody's heard about this book, so I will not talk about it. Frost, I got this for Christmas. My brother read the Subnosis out loud and it was really embarrassing, but I think it's some kind of fantasy. It says Saline Queen, so I don't know if that means mermaids, but it's been on my wish list and my TBR for a very long time. I have two twin crowns. I'm so confused on what it's about, but I think they're like two twin sisters who were like separated and come back for something to rule the world. Onyx and Ivory. I don't know. I was in a Barnes and Noble one day and I read the back of it. It's a fantasy. I don't remember anything about it, but I bought it secondhand. King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet Sinclair. I think that's a vampire romance. The Iron King, I bought that secondhand. It's part of some huge series that's fantasy. I don't remember anything about it. Filthy Rich Vampire is obviously a vampire romance. These Hollow Vows, it's a fantasy. I think it's YA. I don't remember anything about it. That was probably the majority of all of my physical TBR is fantasy. Let's start pulling the romance out. I have a couple Ella Mays books. I've read one book by Ella Mays, Marriage to One. Love that book. The Hardest Fall, I think this is some kind of football romance. I think To Love Jason Thorne is the first one. I think it's some celebrity romance type thing. And Hate Adam Connor, I think this is some stalker thing. Not really sure. All right, the rest of the shelf is kind of a lot. Midnight Kisses, this is a football romance from what I remember. The first book in Lauren Asher's new series, Love to be Designed. I've heard so many good things like everybody is obsessed with this book and i'm like so excited to read it then the rest are lucy score i have protecting what's mine these are new covers i don't know which one is first in the series necessarily i think it's a small town romance trilogy not really sure what any of them are about but I read anything that lucy score writes forever never by new lucy score more books in that little series i have pretend you're mine and then finally mine. The final Lucy score book I have is Mr. Fixer Uppers. The second book is The Christmas Fix. I technically read that one first because I wanted to read it around Christmas time, but I think they're technically standalones. All right, we're gonna move on to this shelf. I actually only have two on that bookshelf. I know there's only about like eight or nine books. Two more Lucy score books. I think they're both like wintry or Christmas themed, The Mistletoe Kisser and The Second Chance. These are part of the Blue Moon series. Let's move on to two more shelves that you probably can't even see. All right, from below, below this shelf, I have actually not as many as I thought. I have whatever I own of the Addicted series. Oh, I own, I think all the ones that are out now. So Hot Mouse Flower, so excited to read this one. Like y'all don't even know. Thrive, Addicted After All, and Fuel the Fire. And then I have The Nanny, which my best friend read this and is like one of her favorite books. Like she loves this book so much. It's spicy, something about him being like her biggest OnlyFans fan. 
and she's naming, I think, his kids. That's actually all for that shelf. We're gonna move to the shelf that's under this one. I have Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. I think it's like exes, he's a florist, she's a wedding planner. They have to work together. Check a Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is Allie Hazelwood's newest release. It's what I know is a lot about chess and not a lot of romance. I know nothing about chess. No, I think it's gonna be so cute. I love Allie Hazelwood, so I'm gonna give it a try. Shipwrecked. This is advertised at Barnes & Noble as like, if you love and have one summer, then read this because I think he's some kind of like sea guy, sea captain. I have high expectations. Um, to whoever wrote that Barnes & Noble note. Wild at Heart. This is the second book to The Simple Wild. I read The Simple Wild this month. It'll be my wrap-up. This is a continuation from the first book. I got that one off of my physical TBR just to buy the second one to add another book to my TBR. What can I say? Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. You would think because Wreck the Halls would be all wintry, Christmassy, and cute. I heard that there's nothing Christmassy about this book and people don't like it. I don't even know if I'll end up reading this because me and Tessa Bailey are on good terms right now. All right, I have three more. We have In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. This has been on my TBR for so freaking long and it's right up my alley of like small town, kind of like single dad, it's maybe a marriage of convenience as well. I don't even know why I have not read this. Last two are both Abby Jimenez books. I'm kind of upset with myself that I have not read these books because I love Abby Jimenez so much. I have two books in the like Part of the World duology. Part of the World, obviously the first one. Obstacles to attract, age gap, small town, big city type thing. Really excited, heard nothing but good things. And then yours truly, the sequel, I guess. Doctor's good like anxiety rep or social anxiety rep in this book. A lot of people give this one five stars. I'm so excited. Uh, again, I need to get to these like really soon. We have four more shelves to go. I'm gonna grab the books. My next two shelves are basically my hockey romance shelf and then what I call my Elsie Silver shelf. I have six. LC Silver books have two in the Chestnut Spring series. Reckless, which is the fourth book. Hopeless, which is the last and final book. I have the entirety of her other series. The Golden Rush Ranch series, I believe is what it's called. Four books in that series. Off to the Races. Second one, Photo Finish. Third one, A False Start. And then last one, The Front Runner. Just a, another small town cowboy e romance series. Oh, Kennedy. I have four books I have to read by her. The last three books in the Briar U series, I have The Risk, The Play, and then The Dare. And then I have her newest release, The Graham Effect. I'm so freaking excited for this book. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. All right, then I have A Blissful Hook by Hannah Cohen. This is the second book in, I don't even know what the trilogy is called, but I think it follows the hockey player's sister from the first book, and then one of his teammates. I have Unravel Me, the third book in the Playing for Keep series by Becca Mack. This is about Adam, the goalie. I think it becomes like single dad or something. I'm so fucking excited. Like I've been waiting for Adam's book for so long and I'm like really, really enjoying the series. And then I have two books by Avery Keelan. I have Offside. This one is so chunky but I'm so excited to read it. She ends up going with like the rival team, one of the boys on the rival team. And I have The Enforcer, which I have no idea what this one is about, but it's a part of another series, Breakaway by Grace Riley, the second book in the Beyond the Play series. I heard it's like, she's unexperienced or something. She's also the coach's daughter. I'm Annette by Stephanie Archer. I think this is actually gonna be my next read so excited. I think they used to have like crushes on each other in high school. Now she's like his assistant or something one i literally just bought the other day it's like a really short hockey romance i think she's like a bookworm and he's a hockey player so like probably like quiet girl cocky man lastly for that hockey romance shelf i have collide by like don't want to be rude and pronounce this author's name wrong there you go i want to read this so so bad like y'all don't even know this cover is so cute i don't even really know what it is i have heard amazing amazing things all right for the bottom shelf on this bookshelf i have still beating by jennifer hartman if you do not know lotus by jennifer hartman is my favorite book of all time i love that book and i believe that this takes place in like the same universe 
I heard it's like really dark, really graphic, sad. And I have Nobody Surprised, um, Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. I am gonna push myself to read it, read this this month. Things I wanted to say about Monica Murphy. This is the first book in the Lancaster Prep series. I've read A Million Kisses in a Lifetime. I still have mixed feelings about it now that I think about it. Like it kind of made me uncomfortable. I think they're all kind of like bully romances. I know this one like heavily is, which is terrifying. This book has also been on my TBR for probably as long as Punk 57 and I just need to read it. All Roads Over Here by Maria Zavada. This one is just like right up my alley of like, I think it's like single parent. I don't really remember. This one I think was like a Prime Day deal. I think it was like literally $7 or something. The Stopover. This is part of the Miles High, Mile High, Miles High Club series. He's a billionaire type thing. And I think this whole series is about billionaires. Last shelf, the last one on this bookshelf. All right, I have the third book in the beyond the play series by grace riley this is the most recent one that's out i have two books in the eden series i have crimson river sable peak it is just about a bunch of the eden kids and they all get a romance i have the first three books in the kings of sin series by anna huang i realistically didn't need to buy the next two if i haven't even read the first one King of Wrath. This is a marriage of convenience with some kind of like billionaire guy. Heard it's like blackmailing situation. King of Pride. I don't even know who this is about. King of Greed. I think this is some kind of like marriage and turmoil. And I think this is gonna be seven books long. So like I should probably get a go on these before I have all seven of them on my TBR. And then the last two books, I think. The second and third book in the Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford. I read Mile High back in November. The Right Move, everybody loves. Everybody gives us five stars. It's basketball romance about the female main character from the first book, her brother and her best friend. And then Caught Up is a baseball romance between Kai and Miller. Last two books on my physical TBR. I'm going to count or recount to make sure I have everything. And we'll see how many books. <sighs> Guys, I'm so embarrassed to even say this number. I don't even know if it's accurate. I have 96 books on my physical TBR. That's like my whole fucking bookshelf. That's my whole bookshelf. That is like, that is quite unacceptable, I think. I don't know, guys. I just hope you enjoy this video of me gaslighting myself. Make sure to follow all my socials down below, the My Goodreads, Amazon wish list. All that stuff will be linked down below. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos by me. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye!